Greetings and welcome to the Blastcast. My name is Jars, and with me as always is the man who can land a P-51D Mustang faster than anybody, Lightning Dragon. It is indeed very fast and also very deadly. Any landing that you can scoop your body out with a spatula is a good one. So let's get into this week's Star Citizen news. Around the Verse covered a variety of topics starting with damage thruster effects. These effects look like trails of fire that follow your ship of varying sizes depending upon how much damage has been occurred. They want to present strong visual cues so that you're aware that you've damaged the ship that you're pursuing. These effects are being explored, so further changes than what they have shown, well, that's probably down the line as well. CIG also showed off some 890 jump updates. The ship is using a lot of the visual cues from the 600 series, and as you can see on the model, their turrets aren't on the ship, but those are still being finalized, so they haven't locked them down yet. Overall, though, it does look like a mini Star Destroyer. Pretty badass. Now this is my favorite update of the week, the Karak. After presenting the ship last time, the community had a lot to say about the way that it looked. They compared the ship to a Dashund, or if I'm pronouncing that right, maybe it's Dotson. I don't know. The point is, is they compared it to a dog. And they went back and looked at it and made some significant changes. And frankly now, and I've been seeing these posts and I do agree with them, in a lot of ways it looks even better than the original concept. Instead of having those four little spindly little landing gear. It has landing gear attached to the engines of the back which actually rotate down on the dishes and kind of angle out and the front landing gear is from the center of the front right behind the main cargo ramp. Kind of gives it a tripod landing. Now that might be a little less stable but it does look a lot better. CIG loves their rotating engines. Well yeah I mean since they developed technology with the reclaimer it might as well use it. But either way I'd like to thank the community for their feedback and the devs for listening to it. CIG also presented some Art Corp City updates. Now the buildings in the video look a bit smoother, a little bit less like they did in the presentation, but a lot more dense. There's a lot more buildings of varying height, and I think overall it looks much improved. Now there have been some posts on the forum stating that they think the old version looks significantly better. I'm going to tend to disagree, and I'll show these images of why that is. It really does look more like a modern city because of all the varying buildings and heights. Now. There are some differences when it comes to how you can fly on this planet, and we'll give you a breakdown in that just a moment. And speaking of that breakdown, let's get into Reverse the Verse. Now we're going to cover some of it here if you want to watch the full video. Well, you know where to find it. It actually was a pretty good comeback show. I enjoyed it. Alright, so will all of Art Corp be explorable? Well, the minimum flight height for Art Corp will be about 400 meters. And the reason for that is that the textures are rather low res when you get really close to the ground. And there are some performance issues. That's why they can't do super high res textures in every single part of the planet. That would just kill most people's computers. Now, there are some buildings that extend well over 1,000 meters. So you're still going to have a, a feel of flying between buildings. Initially speaking, the only landing zone is going to be Area 18. And public transport through Area 18 is going to be done through flying shuttles. They spoke just a bit on automated gimbals, saying that it's going to combine the pips of different weapons, and this will be discussed in an upcoming ATV in three to four weeks. Now, we're going to have to take a look and see how this comes out. One of the things that kind of concerns me a little bit on this is that it still sounds like it's encouraging more and more weaponry as being the solution, like firing more guns at once and just being able to mix and match all the different guns that you're firing at once, as opposed to weapon grouping. I would hope they would take a horizontal direction as far as how weapons work as opposed to just more and more guns piled on top of each other and then basically having the gimbal system make sure that all those guns are firing at the same spot due to different weapon velocities and things like that. It, it seems like a little convoluted. It'd be better if we had, in my opinion, those weapons, if they're automated gimbals, basically you know, group one, yeah, they can track, group two, they can track, group three, they can track, as opposed to, oh, we have these automations so that we have three different types of weapons and they just all line up. Also, it kind of brings a question to mind that if automated gimbals is just for combining pips, does that mean they're going back to the .08 version where all weapons were gimbled and this is kind of going back to the core? Is the whole gimbal versus fixed debate going to be killed off? I don't know. There's just a couple things in here that it's, it's not a lot of information, but it does leave a lot of questions. Definitely something we'll have to go into when we find out more information. Oh, yeah. CIG is going to be adding more towns and villages to planets in the future. So it's going to be more than just outposts. That's awesome. Yeah, you and I were talking about this uh, earlier, uh, saying where like maybe you as a player can only go into like a couple different buildings, like admin buildings or uh, trade buildings, something like that. 
But that doesn't mean that's the only one or two buildings there. So when you're landing at this outpost and you buy a bunch of well, rocks or, or whatever, there's actually like a mining building in the background or a warehouse or something. Just not one building in a landing pad or not even a landing pad in some of them. Ladders are going to be revisited in the future. Oh, that can't Woo. happen fast enough. See any of our shows for details. Additional respawn locations. They'll be adding cargo depots, ports, and hotels in the future. We getting red light districts too? You know, I was thinking that, but I wasn't going to say it. But <laughs> since you did, I'll go ahead and keep that in. There you go. You heard it first. Red light districts. It's going to be a thing. Well, now the Dragon's Den is going to be more than just a show on YouTube. <laughs> As far as the size of Area 18, they said it's actually around the size of Lorville, if not bigger. That's pretty ambitious, and I was not expecting something of that size. When you, when you go into what they had before, it was nice, but it really wasn't that big. And I, I want to see if they use that core and then how much they expand on it. And I don't know. I'm really interested in it. Here's a big one. Parachutes. They are going to be put into the game down the line. Now, it's not needed in Squadron 42, so right now it's not a priority. The reason for that is, is probably if your ship gets blown up in Squadron 42, it just says, you know, you failed the mission and you have to start over again. They're not going to have it some sort of meta gameplay unless it's in the story where, you know, you parachute down and you have to wait for a rescue ship or something. That'd be an interesting game mechanic, though, if you had like a, you know, you lost your ship, right? Technically, the mission fails, but like you continue on and like the, the game just gets harder and harder to the point where it's like basically you lose. But... And then again, if you fail too many times in a row and the game becomes impossible, you'd have to start over from the beginning, and maybe that wouldn't be very fun. Well, what came into my mind is, you know, I own a couple of those uh, Starlifters, those, uh, those like the Hercules. And I was thinking to myself, they carry tanks and ground vehicles. You get vehicle parachutes, and instead of landing those vehicles, now you can load them up landed, of course, but you can fly over and they drive out the back, you know, and parachute down. That'd be pretty awesome. Also, of course... Same kind of thing, you know, shock troopers, they jump out and parachute down. CIG is researching caves. They're prototyping different tile sets, such as ice, rock, magma, magma. And now you can have your secret underground layers. Exactly. Now these caves are very large, at least the ones they've been testing. They're so large you can get lost inside of them, and some of them are large enough that you can bring vehicles into them. This is great because if you can think about how they said they want to have exploration gameplay, you find a cave system, you go all the way down, and... You find an old set of ruins way down in a cave, you know, and open the door and inside is a remains of a lost civilization. This whole ability to expand into the heart of a planet through caves is going to add infinite gameplay possibilities. Now, they talked a bit about ship customization, and this reminds me back of when we had the modularity. Higher tier ships in a series will have more of these options, and they said the first of these ships are going to be the 300 series. Now, for example... And this is just in development, but like the base 300 may have no extra slots. The 315 may have an extra slot, 325 may have two, and the 350R may have three extra slots. And these slots are for additional equipment or functions that could be installed. It's still in development. We don't really know exactly what this equipment is, what it does, but I'm really curious to see how this comes along. And, and if you can take something like a 325 and then modify it so that it does have three slots like a 350R, I don't know. It's just a lot of questions on that, but I'm glad that some form of modularity is coming back. This is kind of a possibly slippery slope, depending on how they do it. I would actually vote for the inverse effect. The more specialized your ship is, the less modification you can do to it. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, so if you have a ship that is designed to be a race car, well, you can't really modify a race car. It's already been modified to be a race car. If you have an exploration ship, it's already been modified to do exploration. So obviously you could work within the confines of a system like this, but you know, if you get a car that's just right off the factory floor, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with it. If you go buy a supercar, they've already done all that stuff for you. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense. I mean, like you're buying the base 300, it's the cheapest because it doesn't have all the special equipment on it. Right. Okay, yeah, I could go with that. That makes sense. Lightning Dragon, bringing good ideas into the Star Citizen development. I don't know, it's was a pretty basic idea in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one though. Calling all devs may not actually be returning to the video lineup. Now, elements of it may be brought into Reverse the Verse. They may have devs on to answer a couple questions during the course of the show. We don't really have a lot of details on it, but generally speaking, it's finished. Which, honestly, is fine because a lot of the questions were repeats at this point. Things we've heard a couple dozen times. 
And I'd rather the developers had more time to do their programming and their work as opposed to answering the same question over and over and over. Indeed. Commodity adjustments are coming. Different areas will have different kinds of goods for sale. For example, refineries will buy raw, sell refined. Factories may buy refined and sell processed or finished. And plants and outposts, those kind of things could vary depending upon location and what it entails. But, And that's just a rough idea of how it's going to differ. Of course, we all kind of understood that this is the way it would be going if they were trying to develop a more realistic economy. Still, it's good to hear them say this is the direction that they're going. More options is good. Yeah, and it's also, you know, you can build up rep with a particular station or something like that as you continue to sell to one and maybe they give you a better deal. There's all sorts of ways this could be worked in. All right, and about elevators. This is kind of a long-standing point of contention in the community. Some will move and also some will teleport. It depends on what's needed. Like if the elevator's enclosed and it's inside a base, inside walls, inside a building and no one's going to see it, at that point in time, it's not really needed to animate it. But if it's something like Grim Hex or Levski where you can actually you know, see the whole shaft or whatnot, then they'll go ahead and animate it. It's going to be on a case by case and need for need basis. I really have no problems with that. I think wasting time animating something that no one can see is, it's just wasted resources. I'd rather have them develop other things. As long as it's within a reasonable distance, like if you're going up a kilometer or something and it teleports you straight up a kilometer to where the elevator would be, and I have no problem with that either. It's when you get teleported like 14 kilometers like north, like perfectly north, not like, you know, up 14 kilometers or something. It's it's weird because, I mean, you see this when you're in a, in a group. Uh, I think it's, is it Lorville? Yeah. When you're in the hangars? Yeah. yeah. You're looking at your party and it says, you know, oh, Jarus is, you know, let's say 300 kilometers away or something. Uh, and then like I get in an elevator and it's like, ah, oh, no, Jarus is 100 meters away. And it's like, what? Wh why? And and that's really jarring. And I, that's the only thing I don't like about the teleporting. If it's literally just going like up, down, left, right, or, you know, any direction that would make sense by how they build the area, I don't care. It's when you get teleported left, right, in weird directions like that when it becomes a problem and, and huge distances. Yeah, I mean, I don't need to enter a elevator in Port Olsar and end up on uh, Levski. That would be a little little weird and kind of funny. Later this year, we're also going to be getting weapon attachments. Cross your fingers on that one. I think that's a very important one to have. I need suppressors on my LMGs. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. <laughs> I need a suppressor on my minigun just to be a hair bit stealthier. All right, and later this week, we continue our in-game extra cast blast. We play Star Citizen and talking game about what we're experiencing and have fun with all the random bugs as the game develops. And this Saturday, we have a new Dragon's Den, where Lightning Dragon takes me on a tour of the new Subnautica Below Zero and shares his thoughts on the Subnautica sequel. Well, that's everything for this week's blast cast. Please feel free to leave your comments down below, and we will catch you on the next one. Dun-dun-dun.